Welcome to another video on Equal. This is our third video on the paper Methods and Materials. And in this video, we are covering the second unit of the first module Approaches and Methods. The unit is titled Communicative Language Teaching. There will be three videos on this unit and this is part one. The aim of this unit is to get us familiarized with the different language teaching methods used in ESL classes. And while talking about grammar, we have to know that there was no systematic study of grammar in the West. But in the East, Panini gave birth to a comprehensive grammar. There have been many approaches, methods and techniques talking about how grammar or language can be taught and learnt in classes or classrooms. So at first, let's see what is the difference between an approach a method and a technique. An approach is about the notions and beliefs about language teaching and learning. So approach is basically a philosophy of how people learn in general. There are many kinds of approaches like structural approach, behavioral approach, cognitive approach. So People would be framing philosophies, claiming that this is how people will learn. This is how learners will acquire or learners will learn a language. According to the structural approach, which is given as an example here, a learner will learn the structure first. Similarly, each approach would be having a different set of belief. Moving to the second, that is method. Method or methods are the choices that are made while teaching particular skills. In the, this video and in the coming videos, we will focus on different methods which are used in ESL classrooms. Here I have given an example of audiolingual method. We have other methods of grammar translation and natural or a direct method that we would be looking at in this video. And then Technique. Technique is about a plan or strategy used to achieve an immediate goal. If our immediate goal is to make the students learn spelling, then the plan or strategy that we'd be using in the classroom would be dictation or many such activities or many such yeah, criteria or plans would be there for us to achieve an immediate goal. So this approach and method will together produce techniques. Without any delay, we can move to the different methods used in ESL classes. ESL, as we know, is English as a second language. So here you can see the first method that we are going to learn the grammar translation method. This was practiced in the 19th century and this method is based on the classical method of teaching Greek and Latin. So this method is modeled upon the classical method, how Greek and Latin were taught, how the languages of Greek and Latin were taught in the classes. There are mainly two steps involved in this method. First is the analysis of grammar rules. And second is when the texts are translated into and out of the target language. So in the first part, we'll get to see what the rules are, what the rules of this or a particular language is or are. And then by having those rules in our mind, we'll try, we attempt to translate texts. And in this method, in the method of grammar translation method, what we have to keep in mind is that the texts 
we use in this method are literary texts. We might take an excerpt from a literary text and attempt to translate that. So when we move to the principal characteristics of the grammar translation method, the first one is it is deductively taught or rather grammar is deductively taught in the grammar translation method. Deductively means or deductive teaching is when we move from rules to examples. As I had already mentioned, analysis of grammar rules would happen first and then as we translate, we will be able to derive at some examples. So the same thing here, grammar is taught using the deductive method or it is deductively taught. Moving from rules to examples. Then another characteristic is its main focus. The main focus of the grammar translation method is reading and writing rather than speaking and listening. So here the chief or the uh, principal focus is on reading and writing skills. The learner is urged to study the sentences and translate them into target language. This method is criticized for its concentration on the sentence as a basic unit. First, the learner will be familiar with the sentence, with the structure of the sentence and then only they will be proceeding to translation. So the basic unit is sentence, not words or syntactical structures, but sentences. And another criticism faced by this method is that the listening and speaking skills were not adequately practiced. So what will happen in a classroom where the grammar translation method is practiced? Let's see step by step. First, the learners will read and extract from a text of literature, from a literary text. The learners will read, it, read and extract. They'll read it aloud and they'll attempt to translate it into their mother tongue or they will translate it into L1. Then the teacher will help the students with some vocabulary, with the vocabulary they are not familiar with. The teacher will explain or give the meanings of words which they don't know. And the teacher will also ask comprehension questions. So here we can see that the role of the teacher, role of teacher is traditional. As an authority, the teacher will be an authority in a classroom where the grammar translation method is practiced. Thus the teacher will help with the vocabulary. Uh, they'd be asking a comprehension question. Now the learners would attempt to answer these comprehension questions. And finally, the learners will note some similarities and differences between the source and the target language, thus making it deductive from the rules to examples. This, these are the main points about the grammar translation method. I hope it's clear and now we can move to the second method. That is the direct method. The direct method was practiced towards the end of the 19th century. The method is otherwise called the natural method or the Berlitz method as it was uh, as uh, Maximilian Berlitz was the major proponent of the direct method B E R L I T Z. Grammar translation method has another name that is grammar school method and now you know the two different names of the direct method the natural method and the Berlitz method. This method eschewed translation from language learning. In the previous method, grammar translation method was solely based on translation, whereas the direct method completely avoided, removed the concept of translation from language learning or teaching. And in this method, there is no use of mother tongue. Mother tongue is 
not at all used in the direct method. When we learn this method, why as we learn it, we can make a comparison with the previous method as well. In this, there is no use of mother tongue, whereas in the grammar translation method, we know that both a mother tongue and the uh, target language were used. Since mother tongue is not used in the direct method language classroom, the students or the learners are made to think or are, may, yeah, are insisted to think in target language. The teacher wouldn't be using any of the words from the mother tongue and they might be using pictures or realia. They'd be making use of maps in the classes so as to avoid using mother tongue. And in this method, oral skills were focused on. The goal was to, was to make the learners speak in, their, in the target language. This method, as different from the grammar translation method, is inductively taught. Deductive, we have seen that proceeding from rules to examples, whereas in inductive method, first examples would be given and then the students are asked to infer the rules from the examples. Another major difference that we should be noticing is in grammar translation method, uh, we have seen that literary texts and excerpts from literary texts would be taken for translation whereas in the direct method everyday language everyday vocabulary sentences phrases would be used in the direct method so one of the major drawbacks of the direct method is that it doesn't focus on the skills of reading and writing it focuses on mainly on spoken uh, or the skills of speaking and listening. So if we try to make a comparison and contrast between these two methods, then it will be easier for us to learn these two methods. We'll have a look at the other methods in the coming videos. In this video, we have seen the grammar translation method and the direct method. The former is deductively taught, whereas the latter is inductively taught. Former, that is the grammar translation method, would be focusing on the literary uh, texts or literary language, whereas uh, this direct method focuses on everyday language vocabulary phrases. In grammar translation method, the skills which were mainly focused were reading and writing, whereas in direct method, the major focus is on speaking and listening is also to an extent focused on. That's it with the two methods. Thank you for listening.